Hello again, it's Adam Taxon uh, from the lobby of the Jekyll Island Club Hotel. Uh, it is the 100th anniversary of the creation of the Fed, which did not occur here in Jekyll Island. It was when President Wilson signed it into law, uh, which was December 23rd, uh, 1913. The action here in Jekyll Island was um, in 1910. Uh, you know, it's a nice place to be this time of year. Um, though the weather just got ugly outside right now. Um, anyhow, I'm not an expert on these things. It was a good excuse to come down here. I guess I had to justify it. So, just trying to give you a little amb ambiance. And uh, I have a very useful book, and there is still time for shopping before Christmas. This is The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. Uh, I highly recommend you read it. Uh, I, you know, again, I'm not, not an expert, but what I will do, while the bagpipes, which go on every day from four to five here, apparently, uh, while they play outside, is I will read you from this particular chapter. I'm going to do this for a few chapters. The chapter of composition is a sin uh, from, again, the creature from Jekyll Island. This is uh, Griffin puts, puts a lot of summaries at the end of each chapter, and uh, here's for this one. This is right when uh, the Fed is about to be created. Banking in the period immediately prior to passage of the Federal Reserve Act was subject to a myriad of controls, regulations, subsidies, and privileges at both the federal and state levels. Popular history portrays this period as one of unbridled competition and free banking. It was, in fact, a halfway house to central banking. Wall Street, however, wanted more government participation. The New York bankers particularly wanted a lender of last resort to create unlimited amounts of fiat money for their use in the event they were exposed to bank runs or currency drains. They also wanted to force all banks to follow the same inadequate reserve policies so that more cautious ones would not draw down the reserves of the others. Uh, an additional objective was to limit the growth of new banks in the South and West. This was a time of growing enchantment with the idea of trusts and cartels. For those who had already made it to the top, competition was considered chaotic and wasteful. Wall Street was snowballing into two major banking groups, Morgan's and the Rockefellers. And even they had largely ceased competing with each other in favor of cooperative, cooperative financial structures. But to keep these cartel combines from flying apart, a means of discipline was needed to force the participants to abide by the agreement. The federal government was brought in as a partner to serve that function. By the way, Mark at the bar makes a very nice planner's punch. Anyhow, to sell the plan to Congress, the cartel reality had to be hidden and the name of the central bank had to be avoided. The word federal was chosen to make it sound like it was a government operation. The word reserve was chosen to make it appear financially sound. And the word system, the final draft used the word association, was chosen to conceal the fact that it was a central bank. A structure of 12 regional institutions was conceived as a further ploy to create the illusion of decentralization, but the mechanism was designed from the beginning to operate as a central bank closely modeled after the Bank of in England. The first draft of the Federal Reserve Act, again, that's what was uh, passed 100 years ago today, was called the Aldrich Bill, that's named after, uh, begins with an N, I think Nelson Aldrich, and was co-sponsored by Congressman Breland, but it was not the work of either of these politicians. It was the brainchild of banker Paul Warburg and was actually written by bankers Frank Vanderlip and Benjamin Strong. Aldrich's name attached to a banking bill was bad strategy because he was known as a Wall Street senator. His bill was not politically acceptable and was never released from committee. The groundwork had been done, however, and the time had arrived to change labels and political parties. The measure would now undergo minor cosmetic surgery and reappear under the sponsorship of a politician whose name would be associated in the public mind with anti-Wall Street sentiments. And that's, again, the summary from uh, the Competition is a Sin chapter from Creature from Jekyll Island. How we recommend you get this book, obviously, these couple four or five minutes that I'm on here are no substitute. Um, a lot of you know a lot more than I do, and uh, I look forward to your comments on this video. And again, hi from the uh, Jekyll Island Club Hotel in uh, Georgia. Well, thank you.